Hi class. So what we're going to look at now is the cyclization of these sugars. So over here on the left, we have D-glucose. Uh, and this is kind of how you used to see it in the straight train form. right? And we have it in this Fischer projection where the most oxidized carbon is on the top, right? our aldehyde. So this would be an aldose. And it goes straight down the bottom with six carbons. Now, I want to highlight these six carbons because if we go through here, it's going to be really important for housekeeping later when we look at the cyclization. All right, so what I want to start with is, if you think back to organic, what we used to do is take a nucleophile, so in this case it's going to be this oxygen, and in particular the lone pair, and what they're going to do is push into the base of the carbonyl. All right, so if you remember, we can take our nucleophile, and it hits the base of the carbonyl, and then what's not shown here, and I'll put it in here in blue, is we'll hit and push those electrons up. All right, and the reason this is important is this oxygen up here is going to end up becoming this oxygen over here. So let me highlight that in, I don't know, this kind of weird yellow color. So this oxygen here is going to end up becoming the oxygen in our cyclic molecule. All right. Now, the reason this is important is this is going to end up making our hemiacetal, right? And if you remember, our hemiacetals are when an oxygen is connected to a carbon with an alcohol. So essentially, we have an ether and an alcohol, all right? And what's nicely here is this carbon over here and the alcohol is in blue. And so you can see all we did was fold this molecule over and this carbon with this oxygen is still over here on the left. Right? Or sorry, on the top, not the left. Sorry, this molecule down here is on the left. And the new bond we've made, I'm going to highlight here uh, in red, is right here. All right, and this is important. So that bond is signified by this arrow. All right, just like we saw when we did organic, the arrows usually meant that we're either making or breaking bonds. Same thing here. So this molecule is going to fold over. And the reason, and I'll do it again here in green, that this molecule is still a ring is that, don't forget, we have this backbone of the carbon, so these carbons here, that didn't get broken. And so if we make this new bond here and we fold it up, we're going to close the ring. Right? Do you notice how our ring is right here on the left? Is just where this red uh, pointer is going around. This group, this carbon-6, is outside the ring, right? Our ring is going to go from this carbon down the green, blue, and up. And so we have our ring right here in the middle. The CH2OH is outside the ring. And then if we come over to the right, same thing's true. Same thing on the bottom. All right. And don't forget, these two arrows tell us that this reaction is reversible, right? It goes back and forth. And we can catalyze this reaction with some acids or bases. All right, now the other thing I want to point out to you is if you come over here to the right and we look at carbon one, where I have my laser pointer on, and the same thing on the bottom, what do you notice here? We've actually made, and I'm going to put a star by just to show that it's really important, we've actually made a new chiral form. All right, and the reason that's important is if you think back, when we make a new chiral center, we used to talk about things being R S at that chiral center, or we've talked about L or D. Well, the new nomenclature we're going to talk about is this alpha and beta. Uh, really simple. If the OH is pointing down, you get the alpha. If the OH is pointing up, you get the beta. All right, and so why this is important is it's made a new chiral center. All right, and so now, just like when we did reactions in organic, and we could make RS, the same thing here. And so we're going to designate whether we've made the alpha one or we've made the beta. All right? And so we can make either one, but we only make one at a time. All right? And so what happens is they can all interconvert. So this beta on the bottom can go back to the open chain, and it can try to close again. Uh, when it closes, it can go back to the alpha. So if we can interconvert between the alpha and beta is true, but they always have to go back to the open chain before they can go to the other. These groups can't just switch. All right? They have to open up and close again. All right? 
And the reason, if you remember, that we have no control of our stereochemistry is because this group attacks here. There's not a chiral center to dictate it, right? There's no stereochemistry to tell the alcohol it has to come from one side or the other. All right, so now our name here actually describes two different chiral centers. As we're looking at these two chiral centers, the alpha and the beta, remember, there is a difference between the two. And so even though they both can be formed in solution, one of them is more predominant than the other. All right? And so that one is the beta. All right? So you want to take a note of that, that the beta is going to be the predominant species in solution. So if we had all three of these, right, which we typically do in solution, we have the beta enamer, the straight chain, so the open chain, and then another closed chain, the alpha anomer, the majority of glucose would actually be in the beta anomer conformation. Right? And it has to do with these groups off of it. If you remember, there's a six-membered ring. It actually can make a chair, and based on where these groups position themselves, this is actually the most stable, right? So it's the most predominant because it's the lowest energy conformation. Right? So the beta anomer is the most predominant one in solution. All right, I hope this helps, class.